If we're serious about peace in the Middle East, then we need to stop pretending that the Israelis are dealing with a rational enemy they can negotiate with, because in doing that, we're helping to feed a massive political lie whose gravitational force has become so great it has warped reality. It's Hamas who turned Gaza into a war zone recently, not Israel, and it's Hamas who will do so again, and again, and again. They don't care about the people there, they regard them as expendable in the cause of jihad. Why do you think there are no bomb shelters in Gaza, except of course for the brave Hamas fighters who keep telling us they love death more than we love life, yet who scuttle away to safety as soon as the bombs come in, leaving the women and children to fend for themselves? Wouldn't you suppose, as they were lobbing rockets over the border every day, that they would have given some thought to protecting ordinary people from possible retaliation? No, they'd rather build luxury hotels to accommodate gullible Western journalists who can be trusted to portray them as heroic victims and the Israelis as neo-Nazi oppressors. In fact, it's Hamas who are the Nazis. Their political agenda is virtually identical, with the same genocidal supremacist delusions and the same irrational, violent hatred of Jews for being Jews. Actually, the Nazis have a moral edge on Hamas. They were psychotic, murdering scumbags as well, but at least they didn't use their own people as human shields. Hamas don't give a damn about the people of Gaza. They want them to be killed, especially the children, whose bodies make wonderful propaganda. That's why they deliberately put them in the firing line, as fodder, as just another weapon to be used and discarded, or martyred, which is the Islamic euphemism for somebody whose life has been thrown away for absolutely nothing. Israel wants peace and has always wanted peace. It's a modern, civilised country and a world technological leader. The last thing it needs is war. That should be obvious to everyone. Israel would like nothing better than for Gaza to be thriving and prosperous and the people to be happy and free. They would even bankroll it if they thought it would work. But Hamas don't want the people happy and free. They want them miserable and blaming Jews for it. Because Hamas are Islamic fanatics. Jihadis, the same mentality that flew into the Twin Towers and then blamed, guess who, the Jews. They bribed the people of Gaza to elect them on a political platform, but once in power they enforced their religion with an iron fist. Does anyone seriously think they'd be elected again? We'll never know, because once elected, an Islamist government is elected forever, and anybody who wants to argue about it can expect to be murdered and their corpse dragged through the streets behind a motorcycle, as happened last week in Gaza. These are men who are so hypnotised by their callous and violent religion, and so bereft of any semblance of moral decency or compassion, that they'll happily murder someone for expressing a moment of joy by singing at a wedding, as happened last week in Gaza. Singing is outlawed in their Islamic paradise. Joy is forbidden. Happiness is haram. They invoke the Quran in their founding charter, especially the passage about killing Jews. That's a big favourite. And they teach their children that the highest thing they can aspire to is to kill themselves by killing Jews. And these are the people the Israelis are supposed to negotiate with. It would be easier to reason with a rattlesnake. So let's say you're the Israeli Prime Minister. What do you do? How do you deal with people who want you and everybody like you dead at any price and whose position is not negotiable? Give up territory? Dismantle settlements? That's been tried and it doesn't work, or didn't anybody notice? Israel dismantled settlements and uprooted thousands of people when it withdrew from Gaza. And what did it get? A barrage of rockets and bombs that hasn't stopped to this day. So clearly dismantling settlements doesn't work. What else have we got? Mediation? Diplomacy? Restart the peace process? Yeah, in your dreams. There is no peace process, and there never will be as long as Hamas is around, because there's no such thing as a one-sided coin. And Hamas have made it clear they have no intention of negotiating peace, ever. It's written right into their charter. Look it up. Peace would be un-Islamic. No negotiation and no let-up in jihad also enshrined in the Charter, until every Jew in the Middle East has been driven out or killed. That's what they want, and it's not negotiable. Why do we keep pretending that they want something else? The Charter also forbids anybody else from negotiating peace. So, if peace ever does break out, we can be sure Hamas will put a stop to it in double-quick time. But let's ignore all that and pretend that it's all about 
territory and politics and have another round of negotiations anyway. Let's hammer out another worthless accord. Let's get round a table and go through the motions again and then hand out Nobel Prizes all round. We have to be seen to be doing something even if it's nothing. And nothing is what it'll be in spades because negotiating with the likes of Hamas is like pouring light into a black hole. They don't want peace at any price. They want Jewish blood. End of story. That's why they break every ceasefire. That's why their own people are expendable. That's why no agreement with them is worth the paper it's written on. That's why there is no two-state solution and never will be as long as they're around. And that's why they need to be defeated decisively and permanently or this madness will never ever stop. Shaking off these fanatical, violent barbarians is the only way the Palestinian people will ever be truly liberated. And if the rest of us really care about peace, we should be honest enough to admit that.